Hello, everybody. Um, so today we are doing um, writing tips. <clears throat> um, now this one's actually kind of funny for a couple different reasons. So let's just be honest here. Um, <clears throat> it's funny because oh, this is so silly. There was. Let me see if I could. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, there was this uh, book that came out. God, it had to have come out years ago. Um, I can't remember. But it was called um, Right from the Middle, I think. And I never got the book. I never read the book. But I always assume what this meant was... To have what happens in the middle of your story first. Like when you come up with a book idea or something like that. Whether it's a story, a novel, a script, whatever. Come up with what happens in the middle. Like maybe, and this is me um, extrapolating. Maybe you think that um, this awesome ending you have... Because when I come up with stories, I either come up with them because I have an amazing ending that I think, oh shit, that would be awesome. And then I work backwards. Or I have like a really cool beginning. And then sometimes I have a cool beginning and a cool ending. And the middle is where things get um, murky, let's say. So I think... What this book is trying to say is not to necessarily come up with what the middle of your book is going to be before you come up with any other ideas. It's to take your amazing beginning or your amazing ending and then try to write um, a better ending that happens past that or a better beginning that happens before that. Now, again, this is so fucking stupid. I'm basically giving you a book review on a book I've never read or ever thought about reading. Um, <clears throat> the idea makes sense because I think for a lot of people, and I know there's tons of you out there who has read a book and the beginning of the book was so fucking good. And then you get to the middle and it just drags and it's just like an exposition fucking menagerie and you're just like for fuck's sake get on with it and then the ending's usually good um but if the ending's bad or not great um you feel kind of let down as a reader spending so much time um just wading through the slop that was the middle of that book so with that said um this idea of writing from the middle is really interesting if it is in fact what that book suggests to do. Um, so I don't know, like if anyone out there has read that book, let me know. Um, and I'm going to give you a little, um, anecdote about me because as you know, if you've been watching this channel for the last week, you know, I've been working on the next um, Hank Bradshaw um, Dead Dame book. And um, I wrote the first uh, 10 chapters in two days. Like, I just was like blowing through it. It was so exciting. I was having so much fun. And I can't wait to get to the end. The end's so fucking cool. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be so great. And then when I look at my outline and my notes, um, and this happens with almost everything I write, I look at my notes and I'm like, shit, this middle kind of drags. And so I consciously try to come up with really fun, amazing things to do in that middle that still pushes the story along, but... Um, adds enough um maybe extra stuff like if there were any um like subplots maybe have a subplot that 
starts off in the beginning of the book that has some kind of like resolution in the middle of the book create another subplot that will have resolution at the end of the book like there's got to be something in that <clears throat> middle bit that um really gets you going that like makes the person want to keep turning the pages so like i said i wrote the first um like nine or ten chapters in a couple days maybe three days and then um, the last four days, I've been working on four chapters, three chapters, four chapters, three or four chapters, I can't remember. And um, those were fucking brutal. I was second guessing everything I was doing. I was um, really worried about pacing. Um, I was really just like, fuck man like what the middle of the book needs to do at least in this book for me is like all the characters have been introduced all the fun stuff all the quirkiness all that stuff has already happened so um and the inciting incident has happened the um the big like fuck you moment where now we have to see if um, Frodo is going to go to the mountain kind of thing. You know, all that shit has happened. So now there's this period where all the characters have to acknowledge the things that have happened before. Because we need to see how these characters are evolving. And when you're writing a book with a lot of characters, sometimes that makes it easier to do. But sometimes it makes it harder because then you're like, shit. And I hate that I keep doing like Lord of the Rings references, but a lot of people do it. So a lot of people understand it. But like <clears throat> the last thing you want in the middle of your book is the end of Return of the King. You know what I'm saying? Like you have all these characters acknowledging the fact that things are happening and now something else has to happen. Everyone has to decide what the next thing they're going to do is. And um, a lot of times those things um, are beyond their control and they get thrown into situations, you know. Um, if we're talking Raymond Chandler, somebody comes in with a gun. Oh, shit. That, now things are exciting. What do we do there? Um, it's kind of like, it's so funny. <clears throat> I really wonder if... Um, that bit in the office with Michael Scott going to improv class um, came from Raymond Chandler saying whenever he didn't know what to do, he would just have somebody come in the room with a gun because that adds tension or whatever. And Michael Scott's like, yeah, you know, like whenever I'm doing improv, you know, like they're, they're doing a scene and, you know, I come in with a gun because like you can't top that. Like, what are you going to do? Like, I come in with a gun. Bang, bang, bang. You're all dead. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying that's interesting. I never thought about that before like that. So anyway, um, long story short, as you can see, I fucked the middle of this video. Um, almost like I fucked my books. So um, this whole deal with um, just trying to get through the middle and trying to make the middle interesting try to make it as riveting as the hook that got people reading the book in the first place and um, keeping it like not as amazing as what's going to happen at the end, but still interesting. <clears throat> it's really tricky. It's, um, it's definitely a tight rope to walk um, because I fucking hate just like pointless fucking exposition. Like, and what a good example of pointless exposition is. <clears throat> and um, I kind of get some heat for this sometimes when I bring it up. But if you guys ever watch the show Sons of Anarchy, um, this is a really good example of what I fucking hate. Um, I really liked that show. I thought the world building was great. I um, dug the characters. All that shit was cool. But... The middle of um, episodes 
and the middle of a season um, always had the same fucking thing where Jax, you know, the main dude, um, he would go and find out some information from somebody and they'd go, well, what are you going to do? And he says, well, I'm going to go to so-and-so's house and I'm going to fucking shoot him. And then I'm going to make out with his girlfriend. This is just an example, okay? And so, guess what the next scene is? I will tell you. The next scene is Jax going to this dude's house. And then he's going to shoot him. And then he makes out with his girlfriend. Because that's exactly what he said he was going to do. And that kind of shit, I fucking hate. I just think of it as lazy writing. I don't like it. I would rather the scene end where Jax gets the information. The next scene, he it's like a jump cut, and he's like bashing someone's face in with the butt of a gun, and he's at a different location. Like, that storytelling, like, from point A to point B. And some of you would argue, like, exposition is needed and the whole thing. And, you know, it has its place. I'm not going to lie. But um, when you rest on that it's really tricky and the times where people rest on that more than anything is the middle of a story so the concept of writing from the middle is actually really interesting and if you have like an idea so whatever your work in progress is right now or the next book you're going to write or the next short story think of this ending you have and now think can you keep writing that and have a better ending, like one that's like bigger and more fantastic and more exciting than this one you have here and just move that ending to the middle. Or if you have a great opening, can that be the middle of your book and you go back and make a better beginning that takes place a few days before or a few years before? Is that something you can do? Or you could do... um, what J.J. Abrams did to destroy all forms of storytelling um, and have it be like, this chapter takes place this year. The next chapter takes place two years ago. The chapter after that takes place four years in the future. And then the next chapter comes back to where we were at the end of the first chapter. (laughs) So funny. Non-linear, am I right? Um, Yeah, so to me that is also lazy. Even though that seems to take a little bit of thought to try to figure out how to do all that, but I think it's crap. Anyway, um, with all these things said, let me know what you're doing. Think of your work in progress. Is this something that could help you? Is this something you think you can do? Is this something you already do? Um, How do you get out of boring fucking exposition? Do the middle of your books lag? Um, So leave that down below and um, just the update on mine It took me a few days, but I think I figured out um, a way to make this like part that I would normally find horribly boring, interesting and exciting. Um, So I feel good about that. Um, And I'm looking forward to writing the climax of my book now. Um, So I'm fingers crossed. Uh, um, So anyway... With all that said, if you haven't read any of the Hank Bradshaw books, they're up on Amazon now. There are new editions. Um, I changed some clunky stuff I didn't like. Um, There were a couple errors in one of the books, or actually in two of the books. I got rid of those. And um, if you are on my Patreon, um, at Patreon slash Matt Wall, um, you can read the sneak peek of the first chapter of the new Hank Bradshaw book that's upcoming called Dead Dame Curse. So anyway, with all that being said, people, um, happy writing, type hard, do what you do, and I will talk to you guys later.